Hi, and welcome to Better Boating in Connecticut. Today, we are at Marine District Headquarters on this nice, sunny fall day. And before we get started in today's uh, episode about winterizing your boat, I want to introduce my guest today, Eleanor Mariani and Yolanda Cooley. And before I pass the mic over to you ladies, um, I just want to let everyone know that recently Eleanor has retired from state service. She was our boating director as well as our boating law administrator. Um, she was with the state for a, a few years. And, um, you know, we just want to say thank you so much for everything you've done for the boating community, for your staff. We love you. We miss you. Um, are you enjoying retirement? So far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I still think you're going to come back from vacation. <laughs> so um, I'm still waiting for you to come back. But, I feel uh, like I'm still on vacation. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So thank you again for all of your um, your years that you you put in with the state and, you know, for everything that you've done. You've, you've definitely you. been a leader for for boaters and and everyone around here. So I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. You're welcome. So now I'm going to turn it over to Yolanda and Eleanor to help you with some tips on how to winterize your boat. So take it away, ladies. OK. Well, thank you, Eleanor, for coming back and uh, co-hosting this uh, show with me. The last time we were out here was right before we launched our boats, and we were talking about spring tune-ups and what to do about launching, and here we are. It's a little bit cooler, but we still have a beautiful day. So just to uh, go over a couple of points on um, what we'd like you to see you do or recommend that you do before you put your boat away for the season is, one, um, you know, we some people are going to stay keep their boat in the water year round or they're going to haul it out. So we'll first address hauling your boat. And if you have a trailer, that's going to be the easiest way to um, remove your boat. So remove your boat um, with your trailer and make sure that you remove the drain pl plug as well. And then uh, we recommend that you pressure wash um, the bottom, the props, um, any shafts or rudders or trim tabs that you may have. Um, that won't be in a trailer boat, but that will be with more fixed running gear. Um, however, we have um, a little bit of a um, caution for you when you go to pressure wash your boat, and that's um, the concern about aquatic invasive species, and I'll let Eleanor talk about that. Yeah. Okay, so if you're on an inland body of water and you had your boat there and you may have gotten aquatic invasives, um, you want to make sure that when you haul the boat out and you go to pressure wash that you really removed the boat from any water source where that water could drain back in. Uh, if there's live zebra mussels, you really want to make sure that they are not going to be getting into the water body that may be nearby you um, and may not have zebra mussels. So that's just one consideration, um, as well as you know even larval forms of it. So just just uh, take that care to to wash your boat away from any water sources. And that goes for when you go to clean your all your through hulls and strainers too. You want to check for aquatic invasive species in there as well. Um, also, you know, just as we all know that Connecticut gets cold in the winter, the temperatures are below freezing, so any water aboard a boat really needs to be drained um, because all that expanding water um, will, you know, crack an engine block, it'll damage your fiberglass, it'll split hoses, um, so it's really important to remove all the water from your boat. And one other point, um, don't rely on those electric heater, the space heaters, because um, th the power goes out here in a big storm in Connecticut, and then you, if you didn't, if you failed to winterize because you were relying on that electric heater, um, we don't want you to <clears throat> have a cracked uh, block because you didn't properly winterize. So don't rely on those portable electric heaters. Maybe I'll mention um, a little something about trailers. So when you get your trailer home, if you decide that you're going to leave your trailer, uh, your boat on the trailer. One thing that you want to do, or a lot of people recommend, is to uh, put the, the uh, trailer up on blocks so that you're taking the, the pressure off of the tires. That will give the tires a much better uh, wear in the future and take the strain off of it. So uh, people will use a little jack stand to, to uh, you know, crank it up a little bit and, and just get those tires off the ground. And that's, that's a good thing for the, the trailer itself and the tires. 
And then make sure that the boat is angled down so that the water drains out of the scuppers as well. Okay, so um, draining the water. Make sure that the seacocks are, are opened and you can let the water drain. Um, you also want to do a thorough um, review of the hull and look for any blisters that maybe the gel coat has become damaged and that's uh, not impermeable to water anymore. So you want to have that fixed over the winter. Um, you don't want to be missing any fun boating days in the spring or the summer because you've had to have some uh, patchwork done. Uh, make sure that your batteries are fully charged, full of distilled water. Um, otherwise the batteries will freeze and they'll, they won't be good anymore. You go to turn over the engine in the spring and they won't work. You'll be replacing your batteries. And you may want to consider if, if the batteries are not too big, taking them off the boat and storing them inside on a pallet um, is what we recommend, um, those portable batteries. And also make sure that all the switches are turned off um, on board too. If you do leave the batteries on, you want to keep the make sure that they're fully charged and nothing's draining the battery. So if you don't trailer your boat, if it's you know usually 26 feet or um, bigger, we recommend that you um, store your boat on jack stands or poppets, what they're called, and you want to make sure that the jack stands and poppets are placed um, th that they provide the best support for your for your boat. So we recommend that you use three or more stands um, on a boat that's on each side that's bigger than 26 feet and two or two per side if your boat is less than 26 feet. Um, and you may want to check with your boat manufacturer on the blocking plan as well. They may have some specifics uh, as to where they want um, you to provide support for the boat for winter storage. Uh, always use two or more keel stands, um, which is the center of the boat, um, and make sure that you block it properly underneath the engines. There's a ton of weight um, underneath the engines there. They do have these checklists um, that I'm using online, and it is useful um, to use so that you know that you're, you're doing everything you can to winterize and protect your boat for the winter season. Uh, utilize a piece of plywood underneath each base of the poppet um, will help um, disperse the weight um, on the ground. Uh, we have rainstorms, we have freezing, we have thawing, so those poppets usually do sink into the ground. So if you can place a piece of plywood underneath those stands, uh, that will help with the integrity of, of the blocking system. We also recommend uh, safety chains. Um, those safety chains are going to go from one side of the boat to the other, port to starboard, not bow to stern. And we also um, like most of the boat's weight to, to rest on its keel. So that's, that's important. And Eleanor's going to talk a little bit about uh, winterizing our engines. Alrighty. So the first thing that I would say about winterizing the engine is um, this is really a place where you would like to rely on the professionals to do the work. Um, not only will they winterize the boat, but they, the engine, but they can also look to see if there's any problem areas uh, for recommendation for fixing in the spring. And this is especially uh, important now with the uh, fuel injected engines and they've just gotten a, you know, a lot more complicated like your car engines now have gotten more complicated with the computerized um, systems a lot of that is the same with with your engines but we will go through some um, basic recommendations for uh, winterizing your engine so that you can at least get get that started and the main thing that you want to do is uh, change the oil because, and, the, and the fuel filter, uh, the oil filter rather, um, because you know those have gathered impurities throughout the year, so you want to make sure that, that that's uh, clean. And you, that also, any moisture that might be in the oil would, uh, would could pit the, um, the components, so you want to make sure that you, that you get that out and have new oil to the internal parts. Um, the other thing is, if there's any water uh, that comes in, fresh water or salt water, you want to really you need, are going to need to add antifreeze to those systems. Um, and another important uh, 
thing to do is replace the, the fuel filter. I had mentioned that before, um, and add fuel stabilizer. The fuel filter becomes really important now with the uh, ethanol, the new ethanol uh, blend of, of E10, uh, because you can get like uh, it's gunk, this gunk that forms, and so uh, the fuel filter becomes one of the things that really helps to get to to stop that before it, it gets into your fuel. So you want to make sure that you that you have that. The other thing that's important, um, especially with the E10, because the E10 is able to absorb more water. So it can absorb with when it absorbs the water and you're using the engine, it's not that much of a big deal because uh, it just gets uh, put out of the system uh, as the engine's running. But if the engine's not running, what can happen is that water can settle out. And once that water settles out, then it ruins the, the, the gas. So you, um, you want to stabilize it, which helps somewhat for it to uh, last throughout the season. And um, there's the manufacturers, when you buy the stabilizer, they you know, follow the recommendations on the, the back of the container and put it's a certain amount per how many gallons of gas uh, or fuel you have in, in your boat. Um, and one of the problems with the, that, the, how the water gets into the system is, is really um, if, you're, if the tank is not filled a lot, you get condensation on the tank and that water can then go into the fuel and that's where the E10 is able to absorb more. So recommendation, high recommendation, is that you have at least 95% of the um, fuel tank filled for the season and that will reduce the amount of moisture that can go into the system. Um, inboards, if you have an inboard uh, engine, one of the things, again, you will have freshwater systems there uh, and you want to make sure that any freshwater system, if you're going to leave water in it, has at least 50-50 uh, antifreeze and, um, and water. And again, the minute you're on the boat, a boat system, you really need to go to uh, the non-toxic antifreeze because that antifreeze is really most likely going to end up uh, either you know being discharged to the the ground or the water so you need to make sure that it's um, potable the potable one and if you have a raw system uh, water which you know your intake system for the inboards what you're going to want to do is um, make sure that you either drain that system totally uh, which is how I've always done my inboards is just drain it totally or if you're not going to drain it you have to make sure again that you have the mixture of, of antifreeze and circulate it through the whole system. If you do decide that you're going to keep antifreeze in the entire system what you need to do is make sure that the ant you see the antifreeze as you you have the engine running now you see the antifreeze come out of the exhaust as soon as that happens turn the fuel off and that will start it to sputter uh, and then you're going to spray fogging uh, solution into the carburetor uh, the uh, also what you need to do is um, you need to put fogging solution into uh, the cylinders. And so what you would do is you take out the spark plugs, you mist that, and, um, and then put that back in and, and let that be, be coated. Um, and you're going to check the spark plugs and replace them if necessary. And in order to do that at this point now, you're going to have to hand crank it. And, and engines will have the ability to do that, to hand crank. Because uh, you don't want to be, you know, you're not going to be able to start it up again. So um, that would be the last thing to, to do for that. And now we're going to take a break, uh, have a public service announcement, and we will be back. So please stay with us. Thanks. We love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's exciting. Esto es vida. Why do I have to wear a life jacket? We wear it to be safe. I've got mine on. We're teaching our kids about safe boating. Cogí un pescado así de grande. We all love this life. Wear it and love the life. 
This message brought to you by the National Safe Boating Council. Okay, we're back. Uh, I just wanted to touch a little bit on some of the other engine types, um, what you would do additionally for uh, winterizing. So for stern drives, one of the things you would like to have done too is um, change the gear oil and that way you don't have to do that in the spring. Um, outboard engines, you know, again, now that a lot of them are computerized, uh, really recommend that you have a professional do that. If it's carbur carburetor, you can still follow the, the basic um, uh, methods that we've given you already. But you want to make sure that you drain the gear case um, and add fresh lubricant. You're going to flush the engine with water, uh, again, using the muffs um, on the engine. And the main thing with the outboard is you want to store it in the lowest position. So don't put it in the trailering position. Put it down. Uh, you want to make sure again that that uh, for all of these that your end that your tanks are filled 95% uh, so that with with gas so that um, you're not going to have a problem in the spring and you want to make sure that you add that stabilizer if you can if you have portable tanks that are easy to remove best thing really is to remove them and store them um, inside uh, after you've stabilized them and with jet drives again you want to follow the manufacturer's recommendations for oil changes, um, oil filter, fuel filter, and stabilizing the gas. All right, and now we'll head to uh, some ideas on water systems. Okay, so I want to talk a bit about the freshwater systems in your boats. We want to make sure that we drain all the water out of those systems, out of the taps, out of the holding tanks, and out of the freshwater tank as well. Um, first of all, we want to uh, run the potable antifreeze through those systems as well. You want to dump that into um, the tank and make sure that all the water has been removed. Um, and you also want to flush your head, your toilet, with plenty of fresh water. Uh, remove the water, the fresh water from that uh, fresh water holding tank and flush, flush that water from your head into the black holding tank where your, where your uh, sewage goes into. And you want to use um, a pump out, one of our CVA um, uh, pump out facilities. And there's a website uh, on, our, on our webpage that you can go to the nearest CVA pump out facility. And that um, webpage is um, at the below, at, the bottom of the screen here so please refer to that and uh, you can find out the local pump out facility. You want to uh, make sure that you close the intake seacock for your um, for your your head system and then make sure that you pump pump in that non-toxic antifreeze through the head as well once you um, have that that holding tank pumped out. Um, a lot of people are um, opting to keep their boat in the water um, through the season. Our winters seem to be um, shorter. The um, anti-fouling paint is getting better and better, and um, so people are leaving their boats in the water um, through the, throughout the winter. And I just wanted to give you some things to uh, look at before you um, leave your boat. Um, for a couple of months and come back to it in the spring, um, you may find it on the bottom of the ocean if you don't check on it and take some of these um, steps in securing your boat. So ensure your bilge pumps are in good working condition. Uh, make sure that you keep the, your batteries charged up or at least that your boat is plugged into shore power so that your batteries are charged up and you don't have any bilge pump failure. Uh, you want to make sure that you check your boat every few weeks and um, if, if the marina that you're storing the boat at or if it's outside your house, um, you may want to look into a bubbler system so that uh, the ice doesn't form around your boat. Okay, and the last thing we want you to do when you're, um, when you're docked, when you're storing your boat in the water is make sure you check your dock lines and chafing gear as well. Ensure that the fenders are properly placed and if you can, if there's space, to uh, center your boat in the slip. So um, some of those winter nor'easter storms that come in, your boat's not um, banging up against um, the dock there. Before covering your boat, we recommend that you cover your boat as well. Uh, we want you to remove the electronics, uh, wash the lines in um, warm soapy water and dry them, pro dry them out 
um, thoroughly. We want you to uh, remove your life jackets, um, bring them home, clean them, and draw, you know, store them in a warm, dry space too, so that they're serviceable for next year. And if you have an inflatable life jacket, we recommend that you um, remove the CO2 cartridge as well, and make sure that you know that those things are in good working condition. So you might um, have to make some replacement you know, purchases over the winter if those things aren't in good condition after the season. And after doing everything, um, we want to ensure that you cover your, your boat and protect it. It extends the life of your vessel. Um, it it keeps, uh, keeps the leaves and debris from clogging the scuppers and it, that which caused the boat to flood and uh, flooding, you know, eventually the temperature will drop overnight and cause ice and damage um, to your boat and and um, we don't want anything to crack um, as a result of water in those scuppers and whatnot. Uh, never tie the cover to a jack stand or a poppet. Um, a big windstorm may come and um, pull pull the cover up and then pull your, your poppets out from underneath your boat. The best covers um, are custom made ones. Uh, they're expensive, um, but they come with built in vents and we encourage um, vents because that um, reduces mildew growth. Um, Let me just say one thing too about that, the mildew. So if you don't get the cover, you know, with the vents and all that, one of the things that you want to do is make sure that you have all your uh, doors open because uh, you don't want to close it up so that air can't circulate. The circulation of the air is what keeps mildew from really forming. So a lot of times people will take the mildew um, desiccant also that you can get anywhere uh, and put a few of those in strategic areas and that will collect water uh, so that you, you to try to prevent the mildew. And then the other thing is you'd make sure that if you have any kind of cushions or something on your boat, just take them home uh, because those are the things that'll be really susceptible to mildew and could cost a lot of money to, to try to get that fixed. And then there's always the option of shrink wrapping your boat. Uh, we recommend that you do um, use a professional um, if you decide to shrimp rack, shrimp, shrink wrap your boat. Um, Make sure that you pay the extra money to have the uh, vents installed and um, installing a, a um, hatch as well so you can get in and out of the boat so you can go check on things in the winter is uh, recommended. Um, and that's really winterizing in a nutshell. And we hope that you enjoyed the show and we hope that uh, we see you again. And Eleanor, good luck this winter in yeah. your retirement. and. Yeah. We'll see you again in the next show. Thank you for watching.